Hey everybody, this here is Ronan Dave, and I'm in Kyoto. And behind me, you can see, and possibly hear, is the Temple of Honnoji. Honnoji was uh, originally founded in the early 15th century uh, by uh, the Nishrin uh, sect of Buddhism. And in the 18th century, a delegation of Korean um, uh, diplomats came here and uh, met with members of the Shogun government at that time, and they established friendly relationships. Not that that would last, but really the reason why Honoji is famous um, is because of an incident that occurred here in 1582. A famous man was staying at this temple. He was a man that was responsible for starting the unification of Japan after Japan had been torn apart by uh, fighting factions all throughout the country. This time period was known as the Sengoku period or Warring States period. You had daimyo or warlords fighting each other all up and down Japan trying to uh, either extend their territories or defend their territories from their aggressive neighbors. But in the roughly mid 16th century, one man started the unification process, basically by beating everybody else up. And that man's name was Oda Nobunaga. He was a daimyo warlord uh, from the Nagoya area. So Oda Nobunaga, in 1582, he had been uh, at work for about 20 years uh, unifying Japan, really starting with 1560 the Battle of Okehazama. A great warlord from the Shizoku prefecture was coming to Kyoto to try his own version of unification, but Oda Nobunaga beat him, killed him, and that shot him up to the major leagues of the daimyos. From that point on, he began working at uh, the unification process. 1582, one of his loyal generals, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, is down in what is known as the Chugoku area, fighting the Mori clan. Hideyoshi uh, asks for some reinforcements. Oda Nobunaga sends another one of his generals, Akichi Mitsuhide, to reinforce him. Meanwhile, Oda Nobunaga himself is going to go down there. He is passing through Kyoto and decides to stay at Honoji Temple. Sometime in the night, he is attacked. Turns out it was Akichi Mitsuhide. Akichi Mitsuhide turned on Oda Nobunaga. And as a result, uh, Oda Nobunaga died. Also his heir, Nobu uh, Tada died. And everyone that was with Oda Nobunaga at that time, which wasn't many because he, wasn't, he thought he was in friendly territory. <laughs> so anyway, so he died. It was in, in June of 1582. And so Japan, again, was in a, a state of turmoil. Now, why Akichi Mitsuhide turned on Oda Nobunaga is still a matter of debate. Some people just think uh, Oda Nobunaga was constantly insulting and harassing Akichi Mitsuhide. Other people uh, think that had to do with what happened to Akichi Mitsuhide's mother. See, when Akichi was uh, taking over the Tamba province, he, one of the prisoners that he took, he gave his mother, his own mother up as a hostage, guaranteeing this hostage's safety. Nobunaga, being the typical jackass that he was, killed that hostage, and so in retaliation, uh, those people killed Akichi's mother. So you can understand that would make anybody pretty upset. So I'm standing at the grave of Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, 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 sorry, I did that one before. All right, so I'm standing uh, near the grave of Oda Nobunaga, who in his time was as famous as Jesus Christ. But instead of bringing peace to his fellow man, he brought war and destruction. Okay, well, that's maybe not so fair. In his process of unification, he did help to bring about peace from the incessant civil wars that were raging across Japan for the last century or so. But Oda Nobunaga, He's kind of, he's got a mixed legacy. Some people admire him because he was very different than those around him. He was also very innovative. But others uh, despise him because he was very cruel, he was very vindictive. 
and uh, he had a tendency of kicking his enemies when they were down, which uh, uh, pretty much led to his downfall. Here's the, uh, the grave of Nobunaga's loyal page, Mori Ranmaru. He died here along with uh, Oda Nobunaga. He was responsible for uh, helping uh, Nobunaga commit seppuku, ritual suicide. And after that was taken care of, he also killed himself. One of his chief responsibilities was sheathing uh, Nobunaga's sword. But he's remembered for his loyalty to his master to the very end, so he's highly admired and respected. As I said, Nobunaga is kind of an iffy thing. More recently, people uh, have come to admire him, but for a long time, in, in many depictions of him, he's often seen uh, as cruel, despotic, and in some cases, demonic. So it was actually here where Oda Nobunaga met his fate. This is where the original Honoji temple was. Can I drink a little red wine to uh, Oda Nobunaga's memory? He liked red wine and a lot of other European fanciers, fancies at that time. Uh, see, the Portuguese had visited uh, Japan starting in 1543, and so they, they started kind of a minor craze, and Oda Nobunaga, being a very innovative and forward-looking person, adopted quite a bit of, of that. It was here that uh, Akichi Mitsuhide showed up with his 13,000 soldiers. Oda Nobunaga had, I don't know, uh, maybe a few dozen, I'm not really sure off the top of my head. And he arrived at this temple and he said, there is the enemy. Except he said it in Japanese and not in English because English wasn't very popular with samurai at that time for some reason. Don't know why. Now, the original place where Oda Nobunaga was killed, um, so the whole temple, that's right, it all burned down in that attack and so that's why they moved it. Now, now there's an apartment complex where the temple, uh, the old uh, temple of Honoji once stood. And as I said, it was burned down to the ground in that attack by Kitsumitsu Hide. And the residents of this place say what is truly ghastly of this area where a number of uh, samurai warriors, including uh, Oda Nobunaga, met their fiery death and were burned beyond uh, any trace. What is truly ghastly is the price of rent. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here until Thursday.